Introduction. It is Friday afternoon on March 10, 1876. A tall young man stands over a wooden table in his laboratory. His name is Alexander Graham Bell. The table is covered with wire, bottles, and batteries. Bell knows that all of this material will come in handy. He is an inventor. Right now, he is working on the most important invention of his life. If it works, it will change the world. A metal tube hangs over the table. It is connected to a long wire. The wire stretches across the table, under the closed door, and down the hall. The other end of the wire is attached to a receiver. Under the picture in blue, it reads, Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. At the top of page three, Thomas A. Watson, Bell's assistant, sits in a room down the hall. He picks up the receiver. He puts it to his ear and stands. He is almost dizzy with excitement. Bell calls into the open end of the metal tube. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you, he says. The object on the table is the world's first telephone. Alexander Graham Bell invented it. Now he is testing it for the first time. Will it work? In blue, under the pictures, it reads, Once Bell successfully showed that his telephone worked, he kept improving the design. This is one of Bell's earliest telephones. One person spoke into the wide end of the transmitter on the left. The sound came through the receiver on the right. Chapter 1. Growing up with science. Scotland in the 1800s was an exciting place. Scientists were making many discoveries. There was a whirlwind of inventing going on. New gas lamps lit the streets. Railroads carried people and supplies across the country. The telegraph could send messages with great speed. Alexander Bell was born in Edinburgh, Scotland on March 3, 1847. Sound shaped his whole life. His mother Eliza was hearing impaired. His father and his grandfather studied speech. They taught people how to speak clearly in public. They helped people overcome speech problems. In the box below it says, what's in a name? Both of Bell's brothers had middle names, but Bell didn't. He decided he wanted one too. One day a family friend named Alexander Graham came for a visit. Bell liked the man's name and added, to t- added it to his own. That's how he became Alexander Graham Bell. At the top of page five. Bell's mother taught Alexander and his two brothers at home. When Bell was 11 years old, his parents sent him to Royal Edinburgh High School. He did not like school and left after four years without graduating. In blue it reads, Alexander Graham Bell was 16 years old when he sat for this portrait. Down below at the bottom of the page, where you see the diagram of the ear, in blue it reads, people who are born hearing impaired have a hard time learning to speak because they cannot hear sounds. Bell had not worked hard at his schoolwork. Instead, he asked lots of questions and explored the countryside. He did not get into mischief or make trouble, however. In fact, Bell's childhood was perfect for an inventor. But Bell wanted his independence from his family. So Bell's father sent him to London to stay with his grandfather. In blue above the picture it reads, This family portrait shows an adult Bell, back row, second from left, posing with his grandfather Alexander Melville Bell, back row, fourth from left. On page 7 at the top, under the picture in blue, it reads, In the middle 1800s, London was a big industrial city. London made a big difference in Bell's life. Bell later said that his time in London was the turning point in my whole career. He read a lot, went to plays, and learned to study hard. As a result, he matured and gained confidence. In the box it reads, The Talking Dog. Bell found a way to make the family dog speak by moving its mouth and throat with his hands. He made the dog say something that sounded like, How are you, grandmother? He and his brothers thought this was hilarious. Bell returned to Scotland, sure that he wanted to be an inventor. He wanted to work with speech and sound. He and his brothers spent a lot of time working on inventions. Bell's father had invented a written code called Visible Speech to help hearing impaired people learn to speak. Bell and his brothers began helping their father demonstrate how visible speech worked. In 1863, they built a speaking machine. Bell had started to invent instruments for human communication. Bell read about a scientist who made sounds with a tuning fork and electricity. Bell thought this meant that the scientist sent words through a wire. Because of this mistake, Bell started trying to send sounds by using electricity. These ideas started Bell's work on the telephone. In the box below, it says, good vibrations. A tuning fork is a metal tool that has two prongs. When someone strikes a tuning fork, it vibrates and produces sound. On page 9 at the top, 
Under the picture in blue, it reads, this 1871 photograph shows Bell, top row, far right, with the staff and students of the Pemberton Avenue School for the Deaf in Boston, Massachusetts. Sadly, both of Bell's brothers died. The family then moved to Canada. Only a year or two later, Bell moved again, this time to Boston. There he taught speech to hearing impaired children. At night, he worked on his experiments. In 1872, Bell became a professor of speech at Boston University. While there, he spoke to many scientists about his ideas. He met businessmen who helped pay for his electricity and sound experiments. Chapter 2. First Experiments Alexander Graham Bell worked to improve the telegraph. The telegraph could send sounds and receive messages, but it could send only one message at a time in each direction. This meant that lines were often busy. People had to wait to send messages. Bell wanted to invent a machine that could read and send messages at the same time. More messages could then be sent and received. This would make the telegraph cheaper and easier to use. Below the picture in blue, it reads, Bell's design for his telegraph led him toward inventing the telephone. On page 11, in blue, under the picture it reads, Thomas A. Watson was an electrical engineer. At the top of 11, the story continues. Bell did not have the time or skill to make all the parts he needed for his experiments. So he hired Thomas A. Watson to help him. Watson had worked a lot with electricity and his help was very important to Bell. Bell and Watson needed to work fast. Other inventors were also trying to improve the telegraph. Bell worried about the inventor, Alicia Gray. Bell wrote that it was a neck and neck race between Mr. Gray and myself, who shall complete an apparatus first. Separately, Bell and Gray worked day and night to invent a better telegraph. A magnetic discovery. Michael Faraday, 1791 to 1867, discovered that a magnet can generate or make electricity. He then invented the generator, a machine that makes electricity. This discovery later helped Bell with his inventions. Chapter 3, Mr. Watson, come here. Bell found a way for the telegraph to send more than one message at the same time. He patented a machine called a multiple telegraph. In March 1875, Bell traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet the famous scientist, Joseph Henry. Bell showed Henry his new machine. Bell also told Henry about his idea for a telephone. Bell said that he did not have enough knowledge about electricity to continue. Henry said, get it. The race to invent the telephone was on. In blue above the picture, it reads, Joseph Henry, 1797 to 1878 was the first director of the Smithsonian Institution, the famous museum and lab in Washington, D.C., shown here. At the top of page 13 in blue, it reads, The sketch by Bell explains how the June 2, 1875 experiment later worked in his telephone. On June 2, 1875, Bell and Watson made a big discovery. They were working on the multiple telegraph using metal strips instead of tuning forks. In one room, Watson made the strips vibrate. In another room, Bell received the sounds. One of the metal strips got stuck, so Watson flicked it to get it unstuck. Bell heard the flicking noise. For the first time, sound had been transmitted by electricity. Now Bell and Watson knew it would be possible to send speech through the wire. In the box it reads, the telephone. The word telephone comes from the Greek language. Tele means distant, especially to send over a distance. Phone means voice or sound. A telephone is a device that converts sound into electrical impulses that are sent over wires. At the top of the page in blue it reads, Bell, shown here with Watson, was only 29 years old when he invented the telephone. Bell and Watson started to build a model of their telephone. Bell thought that a diaphragm or disc would work to change sound better than a cluster of metal strips. The diaphragm was made of paper. It was shaped like the human eardrum. Bell drew the machine and Watson made it. The machine had a wooden frame that held the sound receiver. A metal strip touched the diaphragm. Their first test did not work. The diaphragm was too tight and it broke. Bell and Watson tried a thicker diaphragm, but that didn't work either. Bell and Watson kept working. Bell was convinced they were close to success, so he decided to protect his invention. On February 14, 1876, Bell applied for a patent. Just a few weeks later, Bell and Watson found a way to make their invention work. Bell called into the open end of the metal tube. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Watson ran down the hallway smiling. I heard you, Mr. Bell, Watson said. Wait, said Bell. We must be sure there is no mistake. What did you hear, Watson? What were my exact words? 
you said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. I heard it clearly through the receiver. This will change the world, Bell said. He was right. In blue, it reads, this painting depicts what happened after Bell's first complete sentence was carried through the telephone. Chapter 4, Bell's Later Life Bell started telling people all over the world about his new invention. He demonstrated the telephone for friends, scientists, and the general public all over the United States. In June 1876, Bell showed his telephone at the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. Bell won a prize for his invention. On October 6, 1876, Bell and Watson held the first two-way telephone con conversation. Soon people wanted telephones in their homes and offices. In blue at the bottom of the page it reads, Bell's wife Mabel was hearing impaired from the age of four. She was one of the first children in the United States to learn to lip read. Bell was her teacher. At the top of 17 in the box it reads, the graphophone. Bell called his graphophone the greatest invention I have ever made. It improved Thomas Edison's phonograph and transmitted sound through light waves. Unfortunately, the machine only worked when the sun was shining. Below the picture, the story continues. The telephone had made Bell rich. Bell could now spend all of his time inventing things. Bell set up the Volta Laboratory. He invented many things at his laboratory, including the graphophone, which recorded and played back sound. He also invented an audio meter, which could test hearing. In blue at the top, it reads, In 1883, Bell founded a school for the hearing impaired in Washington, D.C. This lithograph shows him with one of his students. In 1915, the first transcontinental telephone line was installed. Now people could make a telephone call all the way from the east coast of the United States to the west coast, almost 3,000 miles, 4,828 kilometers away. When the line was put in, Bell telephoned his friend Watson. Bell lived in Washington, D.C. Watson lived in San Francisco, California. Bell again said the famous words, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Watson said, but it will take me a week to reach you now. In the box below it says, calling Mr. Bell. Telephone calls bothered Bell when he was working. He did have a telephone in his house, but he refused to have one in the room where he read and worked. Top of page 19. Conclusion. During his life, Alexander Graham Bell received many awards and medals, but no matter how many honors he won, he kept on inventing. On August 2, 1922, Alexander Graham Bell died. He was 75 years old. All the telephones in North America were silent for one minute to show respect. At that time, there were 13 million telephones. Thomas Edison said that the telephone brought the human family closer in touch. In blue next to the picture, it reads, Today's telephones have many features like multiple lines, speakerphone, and caller ID. Bell's methods for teaching the hearing impaired are still used in schools today. The Alexander Graham Bell Association for the Deaf is the largest organization for the education of hearing impaired people in the United States. Bell invented the telephone more than 100 years ago. Nowadays, telephones are everywhere. We have telephones in our houses, pockets, and cars. The telephone helps us communicate better. It comes in handy and solves many problems every day. Scientists invented cell phones in 1947. The first cell phone company started in 1983. And who made the first call on it? It was Alexander Graham Bell's grandson. Bell would probably not recognize today's telephones. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some are headsets, others take photos. Someday people may even wear telephones on their wrists, like watches. In blue, next to the picture, it reads, the year 2002 marked the first time more people had cell phones than landlines. Nearly one out of six people around the world had a cell phone. At the top of pages 20 and 21 is a timeline showing the life of Alexander Graham Bell. It shows in 1847, Alexander Bell is born. 1863, Bell and his brothers build a speaking machine. 1872, Bell becomes a professor of speech at Boston University. 1875, Bell patents his automatic telegraph. 1876, Bell patents his telephone. 1877, Bell marries Mabel Hubbard. 1883, Bell opens a school for the hearing impaired in Washington, D.C. 1922, Alexander Graham Bell dies.